We'll call the Criminal Justice Committee to uh, order and uh, accept the minutes of a previous meeting. Uh, Matt, seconded by Kevin. K Kevin. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Marcy, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I would like to advise everyone that I applied for a grant that you gave me permission to do so, uh, to add another attorney to my staff. The Indigent Legal Services Office has approved it. It is for $250,000. It is for salary for three years for an attorney, plus a desk, computer, everything we need in training. So the reason I put that on the agenda today um, is to ask to fill the vacancy when it when I have the approval from the New York State Comptroller's Office. The grant was approved by OILS, and so now it's at the Comptroller's Office. And so whenever that comes out, I would like to be able to fill that vacancy. It will be a brand new position. The county pays zero money towards it. And when the grant ends, I believe it will be extended. But if the grant ends, the county does not pick up the position. There will be no cost to the county. I think I did a good job. Matt, so moved. <laughs> Second. Dan, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Cool. Thank you. Um, I'd like to skip number two and number three. Those I'd like to do an executive um, session with the privilege, if the court, if you allow me to do so, because it deals with personnel issues. Um, number four, if I could jump to that. Number four is I'm requesting permission to extend all my grants that end this year. Uh, one grant, um, which is C. 352 is for my oils grant secretary. It ends this month, so I'd like that extended for another year. Um, the next grant is C, they all start with C, is C 350, um, sorry, 353, and that one deals with, we have money left over from a 2012 grant. We haven't spent it all yet, and we have money left for supplies, computers, upgrading equipment, phones, and um, membership fees, and legal reference materials. Again, it's no cost to the county, but I'd like to spend all the state's money. Moved by Claudia, second by Matt. All Can in I favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. And the third one, just so, so it's all clear, is for um, my one of my assistants. Um, it is the sixth assistant, her salary fringe, uh, training uh, and equipment, everything is uh, paid by that. That expires um, at the end of the year, so I also want, so that's the third one. So I'd like all three grants permission to extend them so I can keep spending the state money. Do you have a number for that, Mark? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The number on hers was C652. And did you say four? There was four of them? Three of them. Three, sir. Okay. It was three, three, C two five two, C three five two, and C six five two. Just to make it as confusing as possible. We accept that as an amendment. Yes. All right. Oh, I didn't make the motion. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I did. <laughs> yes. That's Second the amendment. Okay. All right. All in favor now of. Aye. Opposed. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> That was, okay. that was scared me there. <laughs> Thank you very much for letting me extend the grant. Number five, um, I'm requesting to have my attorneys travel this summer to Saratoga for training. It's all paid by Indigent Legal Services. It is a two-day training program, um, and so I have all those forms. If okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Okay, number six updates for you. Um, I attended the May 2nd Office of Indigent Legal Services meeting in Albany. Um, that, the key about that is they have indicated that public defense will be taken over by 2023, six years from now. They are maintaining the state is going to pay for public defense for criminal matters. Um, there is no money for it this year, they've made that clear. They have to have their budget in by the end of December to the governor for this six-year plan. Um, I am required, I have 
I'm not required. I'm assuming you want me to continue to comply with all their requests for information, and I am doing so. I'm completing all their surveys. I would like permission if you will give it to me so that I could send you emails on all this stuff so I don't have to come back in and report to you unless you specifically want me to come in and talk about it. Whatever you'd like to do. I thought it would be easier in terms of time constraints if I sent you the email. I sent you the last two um, that came in to the whole committee so you knew exactly what was being said. I would be. Yeah, good with me. Okay. I did notice it was Yes. And I thought it was easier so you could actually see what it is. I think until the state says how they're going to come up with this money and do this, I'm not holding my breath. But that's okay. That's just my personal opinion. That takes us to the May 10th meeting. The May 10th meeting was up in Elizabethtown in Essex County. And that was on the training and making sure the, quote, standards, end quote, of the indigent legal services application is being applied uniformly throughout the counties. We are on the cutting edge. We were fine. We had no issues, no problems. We're doing it. Other counties are not complying with the standards. Um, the judges, just so you know, are also being instructed on what the standards are, and judges have approached me on it to ask me questions about it and the application. So we are ahead of the curve. So I just wanted to let you know we are in 100% compliance. Okay? So that's my update from the two oils meetings. Okay. Um, I had an attorney attend a continuing education um, on a veterans court, on veterans services. So I just wanted to let you know we had that. I attached that material if you're interested in reading that. Um, again, it was no cost to the county. It was paid by indigent legal services funding. Um, so the next thing I'm up to is number eight. Could I respectfully request to go into executive session to discuss numbers two and three, which is vacancies. Okay, do you want a, a quick update on the nighttime arraignment, where we stand? Certainly, Your Honor. Um, <laughs> sorry, I keep saying that. I'm, I'm That's kidding. incorrect. Sorry, like that. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so in terms of the indigent legal services and the arraignment piece, the morning arraignment and evening arraignment, um, we had a meeting April, um, I believe it was, down in Saratoga with judges um, and with a lot of our, six of our judges, uh, the police was, sheriff's department was there, state police did not show, Glens Falls PD was there, um, and OILS people were there, and a lot of OCA people were there. Um, and they decided to come up with a new suggestion or requirement for the arraignment piece. They now want security for the judge. Now, when we have a night arraignment or an early morning arraignment before court hours, there is a police officer, one or two, with the defendant, and that's what our security is. The judges don't, the courts don't have security after hours. And um, apparently there is a sovereign citizen group out in western New York that Office of Court Administration is concerned about and how they react at arraignments and their concern for the safety of the judge at arraignment. So as such, they have not approved our arraignment plan that we have put into effect. They want the county to come up with funding to supply security for the judge. Um, and so at this point in time, there isn't funds for that. OCA is not putting up the funds for it. I have no funds in my budget for it. Um, so we are still doing arraignments exactly as we have been doing. Um, I, the, we had a discussion with a uh, meeting with Judge Hobbs, some of the other judges here. Mr. Montesi was there. Bud York was there. Was the sheriff's there? I was um, Glen Falls PD. I, I'm think they were, I'm not. I'm Chief was there. Chief was there, okay, yeah. good. Um, state police was not there. And um, there has been discussions about how that would, could happen and what the cost would be to the county. And I know Mr. Montesi um, took down some notes and was getting some figures together in order to have um, the cost issue for retired police officers who work as court security, such as we have at the magnetometers and those kinds of things, and minimal recall hours for them if they were in fact there was an arraignment to occur. Because you need to understand, we don't have an arraignment every night. It's not a guarantee there will be one. So the issue would become, you would only pay someone if they physically had to come in, because you certainly are not going to pay someone not to show up. That's not so the, basically, we, 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 we Presenting, we're going to be presenting to do Judge Caruso, I guess it is, that uh, we would be using part-time police officers 
and and there seems to be enough of them in the area to help help make this work. We also uh, have gotten our our uh, building, our facility almost ready for that, yeah. and. Um, According to Judge Caruso, if we can get all of this done, we'd be on the leading edge, and uh, there may be a grant for us. So this will not be out-of-pocket dollars at, at this point. And that's what we're working for. And um, they also want us to do uh, whatever it costs us to uh, put that uh, facility together um, to, to include that. So uh, the biggest part would be the payroll. And it looks like, uh, you know, easily nighttime arraignment could be a $100,000 issue. But, uh, Yes. Can you arrange for us to have a tour of the new facility for sure. arraignment? That's yeah. easy. Thank you. Okay. Yes. So this is the nighttime program where the town justices come okay. down and... Right. To a come to the <coughs> centralized arraignment, which is the old jail. Um, now, when somebody's arraigned, they're in cuffs, right? Correct. They're in custody. Um, and I mean, they're actually handcuffed. They are that is a decision by the police agency. I can tell you 99.99% .99 of the time they are, but there could, if there was a reason not to have them in cuffs, then that's a decision by the police agency, and I don't have any say in that, neither does the judge. But the reality is, yes, they are in cuffs. I, one more. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say that, I mean, the town of Oregon doesn't have security for our judge now. Correct. That's exactly correct. <laughs> right. and I don't know how many towns do. I can tell you so that the state it, is the, the state wants the county to come up with paying for security for their courts. Um, I can tell Another. you Glens Falls has security, um, Lake George, well, we, what, that's it. What we asked the judge, we said, you know, when, uh, when a police officer knocks on the door of a justice in, in the town, Where's the security? He said, well, that, that may be, but this is what we want. So we said, okay. Sure. Yes, you pay for it. Yeah. Here's my memory, but the, the reason we did this uh, was for um, efficiency and to save money. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so I guess what I, this is a question to you, Mr. Chairman, and the county administrator. At some point, are we going to evaluate whether, in fact, this idea saves, saves money or not? I think I'll save money. And it would seem to me that uh, I would hope that it would at least be a wash. Uh, but um, I'd like to see some kind of analysis on this, unless you're able to speak to it right now. I don't think I'm able, I'm not personally able to speak to it. I didn't bring those numbers. No, that wouldn't be a here. question okay. for you. I okay. think it would be more to my colleague. Uh, right. I will get that information. I, I don't know how it would save money. Our judges gets paid a certain fee through for the year. They can get extra money for coming out at night. And uh, we have a court officer, but he doesn't come out at night. So I... I don't know how this is going to save money. I mean, I mean, he's on. I don't know. Well, let me ask the question, Don. If, if if the idea isn't going to save money, then um, I don't want to say why are we doing it. This may be a mandated thing. A okay. mandated. Um, <coughs> this kind of came out of left field. No, but yeah. could I just address that if you don't mind? Um, there's cost to have the police transport the defendant from whatever wherever he is whichever agency it is, to that court, wherever that court may be. The DA's office has to send a person up there, and my office has to send a person up there. That's the minimum of what goes up. The purpose of the centralized arraignment is to have one location so it would minimize the cost. Um, Sheriff York is kind enough to have a holding facility where he puts prisoners and will hold them pending arraignment overnight so that they don't have to call up the judges in the middle of the night and, and deal with this issue. I, uh, the only reasons they don't hold someone, we have one in the middle of the night, is because if the main reasons would be if someone is intoxicated or on drugs or if they have mental health problems or is a danger to themselves and could not be in the jail. If, I mean, I don't mean to overstep your rules and regulations, but in someone's substance, that's, those are the conditions. So we don't do a lot of nighttime arraignments because of that. Uh, in terms of the middle of the night. So you don't get your judges going out a lot in the middle of the night. I would say I go once every three months to a middle of the night arraignment. Um, but what they'll do is they'll hold them over until, just let me finish the one oh, thing. No, so they, no, they, no. Hold me, they hold them over until the morning and arraign them first thing in the morning. So when I walk in the office in the morning, I will have a, a phone call saying, I need someone now at whatever court it is, or I get a message on my phone or, you know, but that's how they communicate. And after hours, it's the same thing. Um, Glens Falls does not have a holding facility. They have to pull officers off the road to hold someone. Um, and so by letting them go to the sheriff, 
lockup, it saves the, the city, Glens Falls PD, money. So those are some of the costs that are in, uh, figured out in this. I know that we previously, um, when we started talking about this, um, DA Hogan, myself, and the Sheriff's Department came up with numbers. I didn't know we were talking about that today, so I don't have any of that information with me today, but it is something that we definitely can all address in terms of the cost issue. Um, there is grant funding available for the reverberation of the old jail. Um, we believe and that would be through the Magistrates Association, um, so that's where that money is coming from. Under the Hurl Herring decision, an attorney is mandated at arraignment. It is a critical stage, and so therefore you have to have an arraignment. So therefore the DA's office has to, I have to be there, somebody from my office. The DA's office does not have to be there, but they have to have presented a bail recommendation or some communication. But obviously if I'm going there or someone from my office is going there to argue on behalf of the client, the DA's office wants to have somebody there also. Um, so they are, even though not mandated to be there, they're there at every arraignment. Sure. Sure, I, uh, Dan? Did you want to... I just wanted to finish up just to shortcut this a little bit. I think that what we need here is to have a, um, a sense of uh, what our savings are going to be in overtime or other types of pay against the number of occurrences per year and that we know what we're getting into in terms of what our um, effective security costs are going to be on a return basis at, at the new facility so we can have some context financial reasons. There are other reasons. There may be many reasons, substantial reasons, but at least on a financial one what we're what we're buying here. Let's, let's at least have some kind of uh, man has a good count. Yeah. Right. I'm just missing something as far as safety. Um, if we have a mandate that all the agencies handcuff somebody if they're at arraignment, I mean they're not being arraigned because they're didn't do anything. I understand that. The concern that OCA has is the safety for the judge from someone in the audience or community uh, being there. Because, oh, like because family members. that yeah. sovereign citizens group apparently has been reaching havoc in the western part of the county. I can tell you I have never had a safety concern at an arraignment before <coughs> and I've been doing it 33 years or so, but again, I'm not OCA. Dan? Uh, sarcastically, I would just say that I think Judge Caruso is being extremely negligent because I believe that that officer would be just in the court to prevent anything happening at the specific court. When the judge leaves and gets into his car, as I was told by a friend of mine as a Supreme Court judge like in Elizabethtown, the best they've done is walk him to the car. But once he's to the car, drives home, certainly that group could fo follow him, etc. And I would assume that through cell phone or whatever, if the coverage is available, that's a whole other argument, that the judge would call the sheriff's department, which would intercede to prevent any of that. Why couldn't the sheriff's department, we have a member there, I don't know why that isn't good enough. Because then you can take the argument even further that the judge lives in his home and that group could get volatile and we might have to have around the clock security. So isn't he being negligent just pointing out this one little thing and then will it, will it, it from our point of view, is it going to expand in scope? And aren't they being, have they, have they taken a look at this, at what, what they're mandating upon us? I don't mind if they want to pay for it and they understand the latitude of what they're doing, but mm -hmm. to start us off incrementally and then this have this expand is what it looks like, yeah. um, they're, they're busting the bank here. I can they tell you no we were surprised at the meeting when the issue <coughs> came up. I, I, I don't know how you take a stand with them, but I, I, I think they need to get a message that, uh, I mean, $16 million in court expansion, uh, the jail uh, that we have, uh, we get audited, we put on 14 new uh, guards, I mean the beat goes on and on and these are all, all expenditures that none of us have any control over and, the, and, the, and they just keep, the hits just keep on a coming as, uh, as they say. Yes. Uh, well, and I would also say, Marcy, I know that your office or the DA's office doesn't make friends on a regular basis with everyone in the audience. Um, and so I'm just wondering what's the next step? Are we also going to pro provide additional security and officers, you know, for both of your offices? I, I just think down the road what we're looking at and what we hear fought at NISAC is for video conferencing and having so much of it being able to be done mm -hmm. by closed circuit TV. So I, I'd really like to see us advocate, lobby, get our state 
elected officials involved in looking at that exact mm -hmm. issue of how it's going to be done by video in what I'm sure will be a few short years. In terms of as a defense perspective, not as a prosecution perspective, but as a defense per perspective with video recording, the client, I don't know who's operating the machinery, mm -hmm. and I need to be there physically with my client. I can't see who is with the judge, and my position has been clear to DA Hogan, and she's totally on board with it, that if I am not there with the judge with my client, she's not going to be there with the judge, because there'd be an appearance of impropriety of her communicating with the judge on the case when I can't do that. I and appreciate she's, she's your great personal on everything. opinion, Marcy. Yeah. It's just that this is a discussion that's been continuing at the yeah. NISAC level over and over, and yeah. a statewide yeah. a push board, as you know. Yeah. So, you know, well, I, well Marsh, we're, we're we're, we're working on this. Brian is involved in it. We're getting some costs together. We, we'll have a better picture. I, I think all I wanted to do was say that this is a mandated thing that's coming at us. We're trying to lead the way. You have to, you're calling for an executive session, yes, right? Sir. Could I get a, a motion for that by Matt, second by Matt? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Move to audience. I'm going to move um, number two, the request to fill future vacancy of first assistant public defender position, subject to Marcy coming back to us with further information, but she can pursue the filling of the position. I'll second that. Oh. All right. A salary to be determined. Yeah. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, wasn't there another one that we needed? Three. Number three. Backfill? I'll make I'll a motion. Move, no, it's not backfill. Second that. Move. All in favor of the backfilling? Aye. 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 Opposed? Wait. Uh, All right. Is that the I don't think she proposed the backfill. I didn't propose the backfill. Not a backfill. It's filling a position. Filling a position for my grant secretary. Oh, that one. Yes. Was that what we just did? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. then, yeah. That's what we did. We're good on the This part of we did. did. <laughs> and that's prior to the, the person leaving, so there Correct. could yeah. be some overlap. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Thank yes, you. Yes, please. Thank All you right. very much, everyone. Exactly. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye, Mark. Bye, Mark. Bye. 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 Where's Edna? Edna. Okay. Who's up next? Edna. Come back up front. Anybody? Sheriff? Sure. Do you think you will let me know? I don't know about that. Right. Don't rush. Because I'm going to teach you. June 10th of Saturday. Not June 10th, Rachel. You've got your alarm bell. June 8th. Sorry. June 8th. June 8th. June 8th. All right. Oh, 10 o'clock. I have it down. I can't read my writing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I put it in my calendar. Transfer everything. My brain doesn't exist. Oh, I did. Oh, I did. Yeah, it must be. I'm on it. Our airport advisory group is going astray. <laughs> I don't know. They're still very mad about the one that got canceled, and now some of them are meeting outside of it because they don't feel like now or enough time to talk about all the things they want to talk about. Well, we've changed the time. Rachel, for an hour you can ask as many questions as you want. we got to wait for the day. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Good thing I'm a little more talkative. Where's the chairman? He's the only uh, person. Uh, uh, what are we talking about right now, Sheriff? <laughs> this is the Sheriff. The Sheriff's Committee. Chairman, are you ready? You're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, it's good, it's a good afternoon. We're we'll wait now. Um, I got a very short agenda today. Uh, on the action agenda, item A is request permission to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with the town of Scroom to provide marine law enforcement service on the portion of Scroom Lake that is located in the town of Scroom. Uh, we had a, I believe it was a three-year contract and expired at the end of uh, December. We've already spoken with uh, Supervisor Marnell, and he is in favor of uh, renewing this agreement. And it's revenue for the county and the amount of uh, $4,000. All right, moved by Matt, seconded by Matt to accept the contract. Huh? Yes, questions? Does that cover the cost? It does, it does. We also have a another contract with the town of Horican for $2,500 to cover the part of Scream Lake that's within Claudia? What, uh, what is the agency that's providing the service? Sheriff's Office. 
Okay. We, we send members up on our, our boats, our Marine Patrol, and we provide uh, patrol services on the lake. Gotcha. Thank you. Yep. Been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, item B is a request resolution to amend the county budget to reflect revenues to be received from New York State Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Services. It's a public safety answering point grant and the amount we were awarded is $173,608. I'll have a motion. Motion by Matt. I'll second it. Seconded by Kevin. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Uh, on the list of still referral and pending items, item A is a New York State Association of Counties. It was a public safety resolution number one, which was discussed at the September 26th meeting last year. But I was reminded to make sure it shows up on the agenda in case anybody wanted to discuss it. Pertaining to? It has to do with uh, standardizing um, changes coming with 911 systems. Um, specifically, it talks about funding. To PSAPs, um, RFPs, award contracts, setting standards, um, coordinating, providing training. And I've heard no further update from NISAC of where that's at. Okay. So it's just it's a pending item that you 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 carry. Correct. Okay. Should, should we keep it on there or should we take it off? And uh, that's your choice. You. Do you ha need any action on it? I mean, no. well, then I would just ask that we remove I, I it. Take it yeah, remove it. we could remove it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for asking. Many times our pending items get taken off, and we have no idea. Um, the only other thing I had in there under uh, topics for discussion uh, since May 1st, we've had one correction officer resign. We currently have five vacancies for the position of correction officer and two vacancies for the position of correction sergeant, and we're working diligently to get those filled. Do you have a list, an active list? No. no list. Is the one scheduled? Uh, I believe they gave a test, and they've already gone through the list um, that we had previously. I have to speak with the corrections captain to see where the current list or the new list is, where that's at. And the reason for most of them is they're going to the state still? Uh, the last one left for personal reasons. We have it designed most recently. <coughs> Matt, did you have your hand up? Uh, the administrator asked the okay. same question. Well, I, I, I do think this is important, though. These are critical positions, and so we don't we don't have anybody on a current list, eh? We, I, have to, I don't know exactly how many they have on the list. Uh, I do know that as the list goes, um, they did not have as many people as they were hoping to have on it. And um, just because you're on your list doesn't mean you're necessarily going to hire somebody that we're going to hire for that position. As you're aware, it's a, it's a difficult position to work oh, in. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, they work, they're locked in a correctional facility. Uh, it's tough hours. It's, uh, you know, it's a tough environment to be in. It's tough on families when you get stuck for shifts and you can't go to your little, some little league game or a concert. You know, it's difficult. Some people choose not to stay in it because of those in and only only male only males can work in the male section. No, no, we can have females work in the male section. Okay. Anything else to come before the committee? I just yes. Um, I noticed the town of Orkins contract is going to be next month. Uh, that's a uh, simple we know. Oh, okay, we don't. We're know. in year three, so it's oh, okay, a perfect. Ladder that goes out. Thank you. Uh, the only other thing, and it wasn't on the list here, is I know um, Brian LaFleur is going to discuss the I Am Responding program that was discussed at the EMS meeting. Um, I've spoken with Supervisor Larry Jeffords, he's our communication supervisor. He and I are going to go up to Clinton County and actually see how the system works so we have a better understanding because they do use it up there. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. On the agenda, I'm Brian. Safety. Oh, yes. This is Kyle says the home one. No, 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 no. You get a go with this? Yeah, it'd be cavity, cavity, very nice. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you ma'am. Paper, paper, paper. Oh, we have to have it.
you pass out the dam, please? I can do that. Can I have you? Another one? Yeah. 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 Okay, Brian, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Going down through our agenda, the first resolution that I have is to appoint our second and third deputy EMS coordinators. Our second deputy has been here a while, but we find in our paperwork that um, he was never officially appointed by this group and the supervisor, so we would like to do that properly, and that's Travis Howe. And I'd like to introduce our new third deputy, Jack Timms. Jack is, uh, is very well uh, trained in EMS, and we're looking forward to him being on board. So I just need the approval for their appointment. Approved by Matt, seconded by Matt. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, number two is a resolution request to approve our multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan. This plan needs to be adopted and approved uh, for our jurisdiction. This is the second time we've done it, and this time it was done in cooperation with our contractor, Tetra Tech Inc. Moved by Matt, seconded by Dan. Could you explain this to me again? Just kidding. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, item three. Wait, 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 wait a minute, we got to vote. We got to vote. All right, go ahead. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Hundreds of comedians out of work. <laughs> <laughs> Resolution three. This is a request to, uh, for a transfer of funds into our civil defense fund. We found in an invoice that we just received from Rose and Kiernan, the insurance agency that covers our vehicles, that they have increased our fee by $2,539. We do not have that money in our system because we didn't know that it was going to cost that much. We budgeted what we pay every year. So I'm looking for to get some money out of the uh, general fund to augment our budget so that we can pay that. We'll move it, but I got a question. All right, moved okay. by, by Matt, seconded and by Claudia. Brian, I have a question. What, 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 what did we buy new vehicles? Did no, no, good or bad, the, uh, the uh, amount of uh, money that was put on our communications vehicle because we now completed it as compared to the equipment being covered sitting in the garage as compared to now being on the vehicle, they raised the coverage on the vehicle. So it's not inland marine on the contents? Yeah. It was covered under inland marine under contents, but right. once it's in the vehicle, now it's considered a piece of the vehicle, and they are insisting on raising the rate for that. Did vehicle. they lower the inland marine uh, premium? I can't answer that, Kevin. I don't know. We I could, would we think they would. With, we mean, could, I would we think could check with Amy and find out. What, what kind of a va va value did the equipment have? That vehicle now is rated at $700,000. Okay. So the equipment is 600000 The problem you run into, our system is all replacement cost. It's not per piece or what it costs you to build it. It's what is it going to cost to replace it. That's the system that we're in. But we have to be careful about that because if the vehicle's over 10 years old, you will, is that vehicle over 10 years old? Yes. I think, I think maybe we need to go back to our carrier and make sure that we have true replacement cost coverage on that because a lot of people thought they had replacement, but if your vehicle is over 10 years old, they will not give, uh, replace the vehicle. So that may be something you want to ask them, and I would also inquire about did they reduce your inland marine premium to offset the increase in this? You know, but that's I'll, been I'll a big be topic. To that's been a big topic of discussion for a lot of municipalities. For uh, municipalities, uh, I think you should we should check with LEED to make sure that this vehicle 
is truly replacement cost. Understood. I have no problem with that. Not you, but you know, I guess. No, I'll talk to Amy and we'll, we'll yeah. work on it. Yeah, because that, that came up in DPW because the plow trucks yeah. changes after 10 years of age. You can't get that replacement cost. Um, right. Yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, let, let me research that and I'll bring it back. Have to find a source of funding for we financing. We're going to have to find a source of, of funding for this, and so the, you know this resolution will probably go to finance. Oh, no question. But that's up to you if you want to send it to finance or wait until we get more information, or I'll get the information before it goes to, at the finance meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bring it to the finance meeting with the new information. Okay. Yeah, I think so we, we want a motion to move it on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Moved by Dan, seconded by Matt. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, under pending items, we just distributed to you a copy of the I am responding scenario. This is the actual contract if we were to purchase this system. It has been updated on page 11. If you're looking for the cost, that's where that is, is on page 11. You can pay for it either annually, you can pay for it biannually, you can pay for it every three years, depending on, there's a savings for paying more ahead, but I'm not sure that's necessary at this point. <coughs> so you're looking at uh, just over $20,000 uh, for that system. Now this, that's was, this was a system that uh, at the EMS meeting, uh, we, that's correct. we really, uh, we, we felt there was a, a definite need and... Yeah, I'm not asking you to vote for this today, unless you want to. But I felt it was important, the tutorial that comes with that contract is very good. I know it's 25 pages, you're not going to read it today. Um, but it is important for you to understand what it does and why it does it. And I'm not, in, you know, you don't have to vote on that today. Did, did we pass this to move it to the... We, we, I'm not sure how that went, Dan, to be honest with you. We, I we approved $20,000, I thought. I thought we approved uh, moving ahead w with this uh, to, to finance, but... It, uh, it didn't go to finance. Okay. Well, we haven't got into finance yet. Not uh, like though. Yeah. So that... We talked about that. Yeah, so this should probably... We have another EMS meeting coming up very shortly, another June special 8. meeting. So if you want to uh, make your final approval, then I would really like everybody to have a chance to read it. Um, I don't want anybody to be blindsided about how it works or what it does. Okay, we have a meeting coming up on June 8th for EMS, so we can... Let's just discuss at your May 15th meeting. The only reason I realized that is I wasn't here, so I've done a little bit of catch-up. We haven't had a finance meeting since then. Our first finance would then be June 2nd. Before the board meeting. Before the, first, before the board meeting. So it hasn't missed the finance cycle. Okay. I just don't know if your intention is for it to go to that cycle. Yeah. Right. I thought it was. Yeah, I think that's on. what the vote was. So yes. we'll talk about it again Thursday, next Thursday. Okay. From what I understand, yeah. or no? Well, I just hope, and I'll, I'll be glad to email this out to any supervisors that aren't here now. But uh, I wanted everybody to have a chance to really understand it. And uh, Kevin, I, I just my question is, uh, will there be buy-on from the agencies to use this? I mean, it, it's to help to help our dispatch center. Right, it's to help communications knowing helps communications and helps each of the individual squads. Squad the fire. So is there buy in for help it helps the patient. Yeah. Uh huh. This is twenty four fire departments and sixteen squads. This is every agency that we have in the county. Yes. That's what this bulk purchase is for. Right. Okay, so this would be for every if you are already paying for it in your firehouse, you won't have to pay for it anymore. You won't have to change your system, but you won't be charged for it. What do you? Thanks. It just occurred to me because of the conversation we had in a committee meeting yesterday that our planning people developed an app that has some of this info in it. I wonder if there's any. I mean, I wouldn't want our responders having to run around and have two apps. The the it's system not that, that the planning system. did is. I see does, that that's does, different, but maybe they can provide something. Well, I'm familiar with that app, and it is not designed to take information in. In other words, it's not designed for people to say that we're en route or whatever. This system tracks who's en route, who's available, and that type of information. But feel free to compare it if you, if you have that one. Or well, talk. I know she had on there, like, um, fire hydrant and the dry. And we're still going to use it. That, that we need. This doesn't do that, but it can. But this is more for personnel, correct? Yes. 
Right. So personnel is that? It's all for the responders and what's okay. available right. as compared to an information scenario. The one that Planning did is very good, um, but it's for information, for bringing information up, and it will give you the information on an existing call. Mm -hmm. In other words, when someone, someone gets dispatched, that app will allow that to come up and show them a picture of it or show them the map or tell them any special things. Okay, so this is not necessarily for the actual response. It's no. for planning for the response. No. Yes. Yes. When, a, when a fire department emergency squad gets activated, when their pager goes off, the person picks up their telephone in the car or wherever they are. If they have a smartphone, they have the app. If not, they put on their speed dial an 800 number. When they dial that number, when it answers, they will know they push one, I'm going to the station, two, I'm going to the scene, three, I'm not going at all. So for the fire chief that has this in his car or the display that's in the firehouse or the display that's at the communication center will show this. So the communication operator can know, oh, well, there's already two people headed to the squad building, why am I continuing to tone this out? Um, the whole idea is to have a feel for what's coming. If a fire chief knows he has a working fire and he sees he's only got three guys coming, he may call for mutual aid before he even gets to the scene. Gotcha. It, it's a it's a tool. It is good. It would work. But and it and I was un, I was under the impression that after we we, we explained that and and the need for it, that we did offer we did offer uh, on a, a resolution to go to finance. Yes. But but even more simplistically, that I I thought there's squads that do not have the manpower to respond yeah. that day that are not giving that information to 911 system. So there's a waste of six minutes, that's protocol, of, of dispatching. For toning an empty building. Yes. Exactly. And, yes. and that, that's what I was saying. That's that's absolutely And ridiculous. that's exactly the way it is. This and will help with that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Fire too. The day yes, because so they should report yeah. it. If, if the emergency squad, and Kevin was right, if the emergency squad's buy in and you guys all sat at the meeting, well, it's going to be up to the town supervisor to make sure that his squad participates in this. They can't complain because they don't have the money to do it because it's going to be provided. And it's up to them when they start out the day or in the middle of the night. It doesn't matter when it is. You can say, okay, we can do one ambulance today. Or we can do one ambulance with uh, BLS. Whatever it is, and now when the dispatcher gets another call for them, he says, these guys have nobody. So there's no sense of me toning out the next squad for six minutes or toning them out again for six minutes when I know i got to call somebody else anyhow. And Brian, the resolution, what it said in essence was that we were, we were sending this to finance to, for a source of funding. Okay. I'll be glad to bring it to finance if, if that's what this group wants to do. Yeah. Well, it's already on it. It's already going. Perfect example today. Yep, go ahead, Dr. So a good example of, of the way it works, um, or the of things that we're trying to avoid is today, North Warren has no ALS today. They have a BLS crew, and for a portion, a small portion of the day, Lake George has no ALS today because she hurt her ankle. But, um, so the North Warren had a call this morning, and it was an ALS call. Um, the crew checked in route and did not declare to the dispatch center that they're a BLS crew. Um, they got on scene, 20 minutes went by, and they requested an ALS intercept from Warrensburg. Um, so those are the types of things, as, as Brock said, is that if they report what they have for a crew that day, uh, the dispatch center knows right away that they need to dispatch a secondary agency to get the appropriate resources to the scene. Does that, does that make sense? And just so you know, we had to ask them previously to call when they had resources again to call the dispatch center, and they did not. We, we have a EMS advisory board meeting tonight, so we can certainly bring it up and uh, you know try to get at least some sort of verbal confirmation that they're you know on board with this. Okay, and then that that would be good for us to know. And then um, don't forget we have a June eighth uh, EMS meeting. Yeah. And we're currently oh. working on the RFP. Okay, great. I just I did want to be clear about that. You are going to send out the RFP oh, yeah. to Glen Falls and Empire. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we're, we plan to, we'll just send we're it. Not that they're supposed to give information to you first. You, they're going to wait for you to send right. the Okay. We, we want to make sure everybody is basically bidding on the same thing. Right. Yeah. Same person, right. Dan? Just addressing the, the buy-in to this. I don't, I don't, I'm not understanding the buy-in because this is all about patient care and that industry is so regulated, especially by the, the doctor that oversees all of it. 
if he knows that that's going on and, and, and the resources aren't being reported and there's delays, he's, he's not going to be happy with the operational value of what's going on. So, it, it, I mean, you, you have your meeting coming up, but there's also oversight from a higher authority. And I don't see where anybody can not buy in because this is all about the patient. And that borders on, I'm not an attorney, but negligence. I mean, if, it, if you can go in and you don't have a collar brace on because there's an accident and that doctor doesn't like the way you handled that, you, you get written up, there's, there's the... Uh, there's really no teeth to like, make anybody do anything. Well, there is if they don't get, if, if, if they get their certification taken away because they're not complying. Or get sued. Yeah. The bottom line is, as we all have to deal with, I deal with on a daily basis, if they tell you about it and you know about it, you have no excuse to say that you didn't do anything about it. If you know the problem exists and you're aware of it and you ignore it, that puts you in a bad position. Any lawyer in court will bury you with that. So that's what we look at from our standpoint. Um, it is the patient, no question, Dan. That's exactly right. All right. But, but once, you know, how many times have we discussed this on a county level? To not do anything at this point is not going to be good. So, I have we're, one other. We're whatever. working on it, you know, and, and uh, you know. No, no, I, that's good. But I'm saying, let's say we were to do, you know, push it under the rug, that would be a bad thing. Because mm -hmm. then when somebody dies, they're going to say, why didn't you do it? Um, I have one other thing. Uh, per the new travel policy, I do have to let you know that uh, I traveled uh, to Syracuse uh, for the Traffic Incident Management Symposium. And Scott and I went to the Information Liaison Officer Conference. That was from last month. The travel policy now says we don't bring it to you ahead of time. We bring it to the county administrator and the county chairman. They sign off on it, and I let you know about it at the next meeting. Which you did. Perfect. Which I'm doing. Very good. Yeah. Now, that's only for in-state travel. That's not... That's good. So, you, so you're following the policy. That was perfect. Nobody else. I know. We need to have you a whole story today, Brian. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Let me write that down somewhere. Frank. Oh wait. Anything? Frank anything else, yeah, Frank? Frank? How much did it cost? Uh, the ILO conference was no cost. The Tim's conference, the only cost was for one night stay at the motel, which we had in our budget. We paid the GSA rate, ninety-one dollars. Yeah, can't travel. Plus tax. Any uh, privilege of the floor, the public? Okay. If not, call for an adjournment. Moved by Dan, second by Matt. All in favor? Hi. Thank you. Brian, you're not paying tax on that, are you? Thank you. Mm -hmm. There will be a. Um,